Okay. Uh, section seven three. We're going to do um, direct variation, um, inverse variation. Look at different relationships when we're given stuff. We've been working with pre uh, previously solving equations. Then we did applications of solving equations, and now we're going to look at some more um, things that we're going to be able to do with equations. So we got direct, inverse variation, joint variation, um, and there's also of a power. Uh, so the equation is y equals x, and so we're talking about how this kx relationship is involved. Um, and so for direct, it's directly related, so it's, they're just multiplied. So the x is multiplied times the constant k. When we have a power, we have x to the power. So you're looking at this relationship of x, so you have the x to the power for that one. Um, for the inverse variation, it's inversely related, meaning, so if you want to think of it in that sense, it's like division. Direct was like multiplication, okay? If it's a inverse with a power, then you have inverse, and then you also have a power involved. Joined and combined, just as it says, it's joined and combined. So first of all, you have a variation with x, X to K is a multiplication, it's direct, and so is Y. So it's direct, but you have two of them going on. So you have um, two variables, so it's combined. This one, the X has a direct variation, but what does the Y have? Inverse, not only that, it also has a power. Okay, so we're also going to look at things that are um, combinations of, of the two. And... You'll see more of this as we work uh, work through some of these examples. But the first thing I want to say is determine a ratio. Which ratio is he work for? Division, right? But we're going to look at this um, ratios and proportions today to right and lowest terms. So it's going to give us a statement, five days to 40 hours, which we said we know ratio is pretty much like division. So if I write five days, 40 hours, and then what does it tell us to do? It says write in lowest term, which means just simplify that fraction. 5 and 40 both have what in common? 5. five. So um, you could simplify that, um, or, or we can go ahead and just convert this to how many days that we have total. So um, Determine the ratio and write in lowest terms. So five days to 40 hours. Let's take this and we want to rewrite our relationship. Let me change colors real quick. Let's do to how many days. Well, first of all, how many hours are in a day? Okay, but if I want to cancel these metrics, I'll put hours so that these hours will cancel with these hours and a day. So you told me there are 24 hours in one day. So if you multiply across 24 times 5 is 120, and 40 times 1 is 40. And then we could reduce this 3 over 1, so we have 3 days. All right, which ratio is not the same as the ratio 2 to 5? Well, let's just talk about what they are. So if this is 4, what position is it in? 10, um, which that's equivalent. So that's reduce it, divide by 2, divide by 2. That's equivalent to 2 to 5. If this one is 4 to 10, if it's written across like that, that is equivalent to, which that's 4 to 10, which reduces to 2 to 5, so that can be rewritten as 2 to 5. That's equivalent. 20 to 50, divide a 10 out of both of them, and 
then you're going to have two to file. So that's equivalent to two to file. But what about this? Five to two. Is that the same thing as two to five? No. So the question is, says which one is not? So we're going to do there. Determine if each proportion is true or false. So when we're trying to determine if proportions are true or false, we can cross multiply 35 times 8 and then equals 5 times 56. So, and it doesn't matter the order that I do that in, 5 times 56, I'm just going to show this multiplication out so you know where it's coming from. Either way, it doesn't matter which order. And 5 times 56 is 280, and 8 times 35 is 280. So what would you say about the two proportions? True. True. Yes, they're equivalent, so we would say true. Anytime you're doing a comparison with proportions, you cross multiply. So we're going to have uh, 20 times 10 there, 82 times 7. 20 times 120 times 10 is 1200, and 82 times 7 is 574. So false. All right, so the first couple of questions are just kind of some prompts, a little bit of a warm up. So now we're going to go into a solve the equation, but it's set up as a proportion. So in all of our solve the equations, we're trying to isolate the variable and get it by itself. But to start this problem, we're going to cross multiply. So you're going to have um, 20 times x there is equal to 175 times 4. So 20 times x is 20x. And then I have um, 4 times 175. So you can go off to the side and multiply that out. 5 times 4 is 20, 32, 20 to 30, 700. To get x by itself, you're going to divide both sides by 20. These zeros will cancel the end, so 70 divided by 2 is 35. X is equal to 35. How could I check myself on that? <laughs> Plug in X, cross multiply, cross multiply. If they're equivalent, you know you got it true, therefore you know you got your X value right. Okay. All right. Here, we have to be careful with this one. We're going to say 6 times 3X plus 1. You have to put that in parentheses and be careful to be um, precise with this. And 7 times 2x minus 3 because you want to be able to distribute and simplify before you start solving the equation. So here you'll have 6 times 3 is 18x plus 6 times 1 is 6. On the right side you'll have 7 times 2 is 14. 7 minus 3 is negative 21. Careful with your sign. Now, left-hand side is simplified. Right-hand side is simplified. We want to get the variable all on the same side. So I'm going to subtract 14x. So that is gone. And now over here, I'll add like terms. And we're back to our solving equation step. Get the variable by itself. So the first thing you want to do is subtract 6 from both sides. Using our rules for adding integers, same signs, add and keep the sign. Divide both sides by 4. Which in this case, um, negative 27. 27 doesn't divide into 4, so just leave it in fraction form. Technically, you could put it in your calculator. Oh, well, we don't. We're not going to really use calculators, but you could divide it out and use the decimal. But it's fine to leave it in this exact format with fractions. 
If your fractions do reduce, so you want to make sure you reduce them. All right, so now we're going to take the word format for this and work with ratios. It says nine pair of beans cost $121.50. Find the cost of five pair. So there is more than one way to do this, and a lot of you are, uh, if you shop any and you're intuitive, you can do this on your own. You can divide that and know how to do it. But the nature of today's lesson is to set up ratios and to solve on um, proportions. So we're going to do it that way. But yeah, I mean, just trust your gut on it if you prefer to do it um, otherwise. So if we take the total, $121.50, how many beans does that cover? Nine. So if you do cost over genes, you want to do cost over genes, right? So cost over genes equals cost over genes. So what's the next thing that I know? Five pair. So I know how many beans. What's left is what I'm solving for. I'm looking for the cost of the five pair. So the only thing we're we'll going to proportions and the most important things is if you do cost over genes then every proportion every that you set up every ratio you set up must be that if it's cars over trucks then everything needs to be cars over trucks um so what if if the genes is a problem? yes yes absolutely good question good question she said can we have swap that yes it's all about consistency so technically if she would have just set this up she could have even um said 9 over 121 is equal to 5 over x. If it was, if she did uh, genes over cost equals genes over cost, or you could even do cost over cost equals genes over genes, but it's got to be consistent. Whatever you start with and establish the first ratio, just make the second one match it, and then cross multiply and solve. Uh, cross multiply and solve on these. So we'll have. Um, 5 times 121.50 is equal to 9x. Our goal is to get x by itself, so divide both sides by 9. Actually, let me go ahead and multiply that out first. Um, 607.50. Then divide both sides by 9. Seven fifty. So for five pair, sixty-seven fifty is equal to x. And since it's cost, it's a minus. Sorry, sixty-seven fifty is equal to nine x. Sorry, is sales tax on a DVD on a sixteen-dollar DVD is um dollar forty? How much would sales tax be on a hundred and twenty-dollar Blu-ray? So we could do. Cost, if I do it as it's written, I have cost and I have tax. So if I do cost over tax, then I just choose to set it up that way. I have my cost was 16, my tax was $1.40. Then I need cost and tax over there. Tax is what the question is, so we're going to let that be X, and the cost for the Blu ray is 120. So cost over tax equals cost over tax. It's not the only way you can set this up, but it's a consistent way. And once you establish it, just be consistent. So we'll have 16x is equal to 140 times 120. Okay. Divide both sides by 16. Right, so you can see the mistake. 
common problems this next one you'll see these pretty often um, distance between Kansas City and Denver is 600 miles on a map it's scaled to 2.4 feet how many feet between Memphis and Philadelphia when the two cities are actually a thousand miles apart so I'm sure you've seen this type of stuff before scaled also standardized tests in a lot of times they like to use these a good bit um, and so we'll take it and break it down. Um, it, we're going to look at the actual miles and we want to compare it to how much is represented on the map. So let's just go with actual over the map, over the map scale. So for the first uh, ratio, we have Kansas to Denver 600 actual miles. But on the map, it's 2.4 feet. And it's saying, using that same map representation, how many feet, so how many feet, that's our question, between the Memphis and Philadelphia, when the two cities are actually, the actual miles are 1,000. So determine the proportion you want to go with, be consistent, stick with it, and then our tactic is going to be to cross multiply to solve this. So you're going to have 600x is equal to 1,000 times 2.4. That's a pretty easy one. Then divide both sides by 600. Square cancel and x is equal to 4 feet. So 4 feet on the map will represent 1,000 miles. And then, of course, there's our best buy. Um, when you go to the grocery store, and I'm sure you've done these before, it says you can buy a four pound bag of sugar for $1.79, or you can buy a 10 pound bag of sugar for $4.29. And the objective here is you want to look at the unit cost. So you want to figure out, well, how much, if I use the first price, four pounds for $179, and I determine how much they're charging me for one pound of sugar, then I can compare that to how much they're charging me for one pound of sugar and the second one and determine which one's the better buy. So they'll give you two, and the comparison is that you'll take um, 1.79 and divide it by four. And then the other one you'll do is you'll take the $4.29 and you divide it by 10 to get unit cost so that we can figure out how much they're charging for a single pound. Then you can compare the two to know which one's going to be better. Um, I'll give you just a second. You can work with those two. So when you divide them out, you'll see that the first one, they're charging you 45 cents for a pound. And the second one, you're only paying 43 cents. I mean, not necessarily a huge difference, but if you were talking about large quantities of stuff, then it's, or gas, like pennies matter and those things add up. So which one's the better buy? The 43, the 43 cents, yeah. So when you have comparisons like this, your objective at hand is to find unit cost. And unit cost is, well, how much am I actually paying for one unit? Then 
get them on the same scale, and then you can compare the unit cost to determine what's the better buy. Okay. Um, you'll also have some visual ones in a proportions ratio, and the idea is the same. First thing you want to do is make sure uh, the geometries are lined up. They, they're very similar. They're in the same direction. If you got triangles split different direction, you want to make sure you get them. It's a lot easier if you kind of sketch them or visualize them in the exact same positions. One's a smaller one, one's a larger one. We know that. But I see they're both right triangles, and I put that on my left so that I can do it. Most of the time, they're going to be set up like that for you. But if you're taking a standardized test, some of you will still have to take that practice. And they have ones like these. Um, sometimes they'll flip them in different ways to try to confuse you. Visually draw them so that they look similar. And then we're just going to, there's a lot of options here. We can do small to big. So, but also, if I do this one, which one do I have to put it over? Nine. It has to be in the same location. And that's why I say it's going to fall in your favor if you line them up and make them look. So, small over big is equal to, now, I have options over here. But what am I looking for? I'm trying to find side X. So X on the small one is equal to what on the big one? Okay. Very good. Same location. So equals <coughs> X over 12. And then we'll cross multiply. 30 times 12 is 36. And then here, 9 times X is 9X. Solve both sides for X. And we get 4 is equal to x. We would have gotten the same answer if we chose to do this. And I'll just um, say this, but I'm not going to actually do it. If the first time I would have said 5 over 15 is equal to x over 12, you saw that you would get the same thing. As long as you're consistent, as long as you do small over big, same spot for same spot, it doesn't matter. You've got options. you got options there. So... Keep that in mind. Now we're going to move on to our, that was our pretty much basic um, proportions ratio. I'm pretty sure you've seen that kind of stuff before. This might be a little bit new to you. Varies directly, varies inversely. That's the stuff we kind of wrote those formulas down for, that I will let you have those formulas for your um, test, so you want to add those to your formula card. But if x varies directly as y, um, then we're going to just solve this. So uh, if I have y equals kx, okay, varies directly. I start with my varies directly formula and I can plug in the value that says x is 27 and y is 6. So x is 27 and y is 6. What is your k? When you have these, the first thing you want to do is find your constant k. So divide both sides by 27 to get k by itself. Six over twenty-seven is equal to k. And then your thing is, you do you write it again? So here's your. If I got to try to give you some formalized steps to like when you have inverse directly, jointly combined, you start with the formula that kind of matches what's going on in the problem. So we said direct. We pulled the direct one. The very first thing you always do is you got to find out what k is. So they'll give you some knowns. You plug in your knowns and you find out what k is. That's our first step. Then you go back to the original equation, plug in K and the other thing you know to find what you don't know. So we'll do this. The first time is to find K. The next time is to find what they're asking for. So this time we know K because we just found it and K was 6 over 27. What else did they tell us? We want to find x, but we do know y is 2. Find x when y is 2. So it's saying use the same um, relationship there, plug in 2, 
and find what x is equal to. All right, so to solve this one, to get x by itself, I can multiply by the reciprocal because it's a fraction. Whatever you do to one side, do to the other. And then over here, the 27th and the 6 cancels, and you're left with x. And then on this side, you're going to get what? 5 by 2 divided by 2. 27 divided by 3, you get 9. 9. So on these, they're going to tell us the relationship. We're going to use the relationship, and when I say that, the equation that describes our relationship, whether it's direct, whether it's inverse, whether it's joint or combined. Our first step is to take the, the knowns that are given and find K, always our first step. Then we write that same um, relationship down, plug in K, plug in the known, and find for the only unknown that they're asking for. So let's do another one. Uh, and don't let different variables throw you off, but the pressure at a given point varies directly below the surface. So if we have um, varies directly. Uh, the pressure at a depth of 10 feet is 50 pounds. So we're just going to pressure and depth. So if I have the pressure and its relationship to depth. Remember we have K. K is our constant. Instead of just having Y and X, we can have pressure. We can let P be for pressure and D be for depth. Sometimes that helps us. It's going to be um, across. What would I write if this was an inverse variation? P equals K over D. That's the only difference. And then you'd still do the same tactic, um, which you don't see a whole lot of those at all. So anyway, we do a lot more of this in college algebra and pre-college. This is just a little bit of a, a preview for you. But So we have our proportion, and our first objective is to always plug in the knowns and find K. So it says the pressure at a depth of 10 feet, the depth of 10 feet, is 50 pounds of pressure. Find K. Divide both sides by 10. 5 is equal to K. First step, always, always, always. Find your K. Then rewrite the same relation, direct variation. Plug in K this time. So this time we're going to plug in K because we know it. And then we we'll also want to plug in the next thing that we know. It says, what is the pressure at depth of 20? So depth of 20. Why did I put 10? Somebody should have stopped me. 5. Okay. I almost messed that up. Plug in your K. Plug in the known and solve for the unknown that's left. And, and then not, not only that, it's what is the pressure? So we know we're looking for P. So pressure is equal to 100 pounds. And that's what? Per square inch? So we did um, two of those basic ones using direct. Uh, the, I went ahead and gave you formulas for inverse. If you have them, you, we don't do a whole lot of those. You want to make sure you can do a direct variation. Um, combined, you just have multiple parts that's to it. Um, but for the most part, that's pretty much it. Ratios, proportions, the idea is um, consistency there um, with Whatever you choose to do, you're going to have to have some relationships to say what's equivalent. 5 to 2, 5 over 2, and you can see we simplified them. You'll have some that you'll mark off in the comparison. True or false proportions, cross multiply, compare your values to see if they're equivalent. And then the most important thing 
that you have in proportions is whatever relationship you establish, cost over tax, cost over tax, you just have to be consistent. We could we could do it three different ways in here, but if we're consistent and we do the math right, we should all get the same problem. So be real careful with your um, ratios not to intermix them and then stay consistent. For the most part, the best buy, what's our objective there? Find a unit cost and then compare the unit cost. Um, so that'll be our 